Okay, good evening. So today it's gonna be API. It's been a few a few months now that we started, so the end of the lesson or the training is today. So you just want to cover uh, API testing using Postman and also use it just with our automation code. So it's gonna be both manual and automation. So and just yeah, go me on this. So we're going to use Postman. So the first thing you need to do right now is to download Postman. So you can just Google Postman. So if you go to getpostman.com slash APS, so you can download which version of Postman for different operating system that you want to use for Mac, download that for Windows and for Linux. So if you can do that, so that would be good. So I also Google, I saw this website, which I think is really good. It talks about API testing using Postman. So as you can see, what is API? It stands for an application programming interface. So, which sets, defines set of rules, um, maybe they call it contract. So, the S, it also helps to integrate or interact between two or more components. So, for you to test an API, so there are a lot of things that you need to consider and to check. So, and which is basically you check the response, on base of the input, the parameters, and also you check uh, the authorization of the data, and also what you get or what you retrieve or a response. So today we're going to go through it manually, and we're going to yeah see that. So first you install Postman. I've already told you how to do that. You just go get Postman, then got that is downloaded from the air, get Postman. So then you click on which one you want to download. Then that is installed. I've got my already installed. So it takes quick. It doesn't take long to, to get that installed. So from there, so you have something like that. You have something like this. So when you first start, I haven't done anything on this one. So you can as well click request or collections. So collection uh, allows you to tidy up your um, test in different folders. So or you can just create a basic one. When you create them, you can also restructure them into different collections so that you can be able to reuse them or share them. So, or, so I want to, after the first, uh, when you log into, when you open Postman again, I think this particular um, splash window will not display. So I'll just cancel this. So then you will see what you're going to get. So this is what definitely you get next time, anytime you open. So, and from here, you can click on new, do whatever you want to do. You can click it on create a new request, new collection, new environment mock services monitor. Today we're going to focus on the three actually. So if you're able to go to environment we will let you know which is from from here actually. So but the first thing you do which is more important is the request actually. So you create your request. But before we do that, I think there's a question coming in one minute. Okay. Someone said it asks you to create an account. So if you actually to create an account, just close the button splash window. And I think that's it, then you, you are fine. You don't need to do that. So, but if you create an account, that's also fine. But you don't need to, you don't need to create an account. Just close that window. Then if you close that window, then you come to the previous window that we were on before and to this one. So. Can I? test API on my current project. I don't know what that is, which project you mean your 
um, Selenium project or what. So if you can expand it on that, that would be good. So. Okay, I'll go also say I should deal with question after lecture. Okay, cool. All right. So yeah, I'll look into how I can, I'll be checking the question anyway, because some of them can be sorted quickly. So but all the question will be addressed after the lecture. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead. So Okay, so now, so, okay, so this is what you have, you have different, let me go back to this postman, you have different operation that you can, method that you can do on postman get, post, put, pass, delete, copy, edit, and everything. So I think another thing I like in this particular page, if I go down, you also explain what some of these ones are so that you can show one minute the post. Yeah. Okay. So you have your post request, which is for creating and updating data. If you want to, that's what they use. So if a developer want to create or update data, you use your post request. So if you want to update data, you you use your put request. So the same for get request for retrieving and fetching data. So when you want to delete data, you use the delete request. So that's um, the, um, what you use for that method, that the most frequent method that I used. So the same way also, if you want to get retrieve, you use the get post for updating and creating post for updating. So and also delete. So those are the most frequent ones. So those are the ones that we focus on today. So then also when you do your post, you have your header, which is defined, you have your body, and also you have authorization that you may need to use, different type of authorization that you can use. If you want to use, there's no authorization, you want to use a bearer token, you want to use a basic authorization. Most often this one you can, the developers can advise you on which type of authorization they are using. So based on that, if you're using bearer token, you just need to click on that, then you provide the token that you want to use. So, and that gives you that spot. If you do, if you don't have an authorization at all, you just click no off at all. So you don't need to provide authorization. So for for that. So if you read this document, I think it, it will actually help you. So in your header, you have two things in your header. So your content type and your authorization. So uh, I'll explain about the authorization. So and also the content type, actually the format of the object, where or whether it's application JSON or XML uh, format. So it, that is also specified. So in your request body, your body contains the data where the application that you retrieve. So and or to be sent with request. So that's what you have on the body. Then also you have pre-request script. So basically all this are kind of theory that you can actually read. So what I'm going to focus on also now is the statuses that you have. So 200, you're going to have a successful request. 201, yeah, successful request and also data was created, you know, so for 100 bad requests, for one, we're going to have a sample of those ones, so not authorized access, then also for three. So in, there are more than this, if you Google API errors messages, I think you're going to see uh, google.com. No, okay, that's not good. API 
I error codes. I think there's a document by Wikipedia. Let's see what that is. So there are lots of there are, there are more than that. So you can see all these error messages. But the frequent one that are being used is are, are this one. So like for if I want to cut them down to so mention five, you talk about two hundred, talk about four hundred, four one, four three, yeah, five hundred, five four three, maybe also four oh four. So those are um, at those frequent one I would say. Okay. So all right. So now let's get some API and let's do some manual testing using those API. So one minute. So this seems really So, okay. Oh, man, there's some question. Okay, I think there's another web page I want to bring up which allow you to get some API responses. So JSON case order. Okay. Okay, cool. So you got sample of that post. Yeah, okay, cool. So you have that. So, okay, now when you first start um, mana testing for API, there's something that Okay, so I'm say I should post the links. So first link is this one. So one minute, let me post the link to everyone in the chat. That's the first one to download. This is the link for the tutorial, which is nice. Then this one is another one that's good for different APIs. And yeah, now this is the one that we're going to use for the post. So when you are uh, doing manual testing for APIs, so the first thing you need to ask from developer is where exactly is the endpoint? So they need to give you an endpoint to point to, which is where the application has been hosted, and so, so that you can actually test that endpoint. So for instance, in this one right now, this is the endpoint. I went to the endpoint directly. And from here, you can see it's called user ID1, ID1, user ID2. So it actually brings a JSON for you based on that. So and depending on everything like that. So this is your response that you get. So now to do that in Postman, so this is going to be our endpoint. So you go and you create. Let's create it for our first. So I say you click on new, then you click on request. So let's say what's our request you want to do post post training okay let's first do the get sorry okay so 
add to a collection. So you can put description if you want to. So that's fine. So now, so we want to do the get one first. So we go to our page again. Let's do okay. Let's do post hundred one. Okay, let's put hundred post. Okay. So don't actually confuse this for a post request. It is not just like uh, if you want to do on post under comment or do under post. So that's what they're talking about. So you can you can use that also. So let's go to that. So we want to get that. So post that in. Someone asked that what is what is a uh, that what is an endpoint. So endpoint is simply end of communication channel. So to be honest, so it's basically the end of the communication. So in the API, as you can see, when I come here, so this this is an endpoint. So it's basically as uh, some request URL. So and then from there, you obtain your response from there. So a developer will give that endpoint to you, which is for where the application's already been hosted from the backend. So if you go to the endpoint directly, so you would be able to get the JSON from, from that endpoint. So so can the screen be bigger? Let's see if we can, okay. So, okay, that's fine. So let's continue. I'm not sure that that can be bigger. Okay, cool. Okay. All right, so now I've copied my endpoint and I've put it in the, I'm um, using the get, I'm not using the post right now. So we start with the get. So now what you need to do so you just click on send. So then we are not using any authorization. So, and what you now have is your body. So as you can see, the body is not displayed here. So you can have the raw body, which is the one that you have on the here like this. When you go to and you browse that particular endpoint using internet uh, browser, so but you can have a pretty one actually, which actually serialize your uh, objects into different properties that you is on you know, the endpoint returns. So and you can have a preview also. That doesn't look cool anyway. So cookies that has been used also is listed there and also the header of that particular endpoint is uh, um, they are listed also here and we don't have a um, test yet that we've written so we're not going to write test here we're going to also write test using our code that we've done in java but let's continue with this right now so we got the body is been returned and the body is interesting. I think you can change it to XML if you want HTML or something like that. So, or text. So, but, so we let's look for the JSON. So now another one is this one. Now you have response. Your response is 200, which means it's okay. And the time it takes for the response to appear is this. So maybe if you are actually manually testing performance of that API so you can actually know 
this is 127 microseconds so on the size of that particular API so that is that so as you can see it returns something which is okay that's where you have status of 200 for instance if, if I do post one and I say enter so and you can see what the status is there's nobody so because nothing is returned and your status is 404 which means it is not found and that is that and it takes um, 286 to do that so and the other okay let's go back again so okay so we didn't put any other so and so there's no need to, to do all those ones so we just this kind of a simple request that we have and now it's kind of faster so that we have in there so let's check the other ones that in terms of that it's going to be the same thing anyway so let's say we do this one now so basically as you can see the post list everything for us so where's my when we go to this post it lists all everything that we have 100 I think it should be so but you can also restrict it to only one and then this endpoint and it's going to be given to you so also um, some developers also could give you with swagger that explains the contract between those endpoints and what you are expecting so more often they will explain that you will get user id you will get id you get title you get body so basically you're not just going to the endpoint right and looking at what you return without having nothing to compare with so on your expected on, on your on acceptance criteria you should specify that this endpoint should return these properties so like it should contain user id it should contain id it should contain title it should contain body and in most cases also it would sometimes even specify the data type of that of the properties like saying user id should be numeric on title should be text or alpha numeric so an id should be numeric also so you know that will be specified in the acceptance criteria if um, the right process is, is followed actually so which is kind of a contract that exists between um, with, with the API so most cases also you can also see that in, in Swagger also so now so like as I've done right now I've kind of searched for one in, in the post so and that is come I can also say let me search for um, post number 20 so that should return the ID for 20 so which is posted by user ID 2 and this is tied to of that post and this is the body of that post so you can do that so as you can see that is that so this endpoint will be given to you or like maybe even in this like, okay is a get is a post is a put or something like that like like this form anyway and to see what exactly that should do so also one thing I want to do is this one which actually got some parameter that you want to send so let's go to that one it's that okay so let's go to that in our postman so and yeah so in this case right now so uh, this will be an example to say we got different comments right and I want to look for only the comment with post ID equals to one so and for instance if I don't put that if I say give me all the comments so it's gonna bring all the comments for me so let me bring this one up a bit I need to reduce okay so yeah so these are all the comments so you can see there are lots of them so post id 9 is there 
10, 10, yeah, so, but now I can restrict that and say post, give me post ID 13, so which only brings that out, so for only the 13, so you can see that return 200, status 200, so uh, let's say we do 1300, so so that returns 200 also, which is because it, and it did this under issue that people who found that say, oh, it's not returning anything because, and why is it still so, you know, status 200? Yes, because it, what the issue is like, it's not that uh, it's bad request or it's improper request, but what happens is like I've searched, he went to do some searching and he was not able to find that. So he's not going to return 404 or 400 like you would expect, but this is kind of a search and returns not. So basically it's returning zero returns. So it's, so with that, you see I have like 200 because it's a good request, so it's not a bad request. So for, for instance, if you do, let's say 13, so you have that, but if you now do, um, let's say 1300, so that's what this one I'm talking about now, that it's kind of a bad request, so it's not, uh, not I'm not, sorry, not bad request. So that particular uh, uh, entity or data is not found. So it's not found, so it's returning 400. So, but if you do something like this, let's say B, so, okay, so that means it's not, uh, okay, let's say that. Okay, still 400, so, well, that means it's, it accepts any number, any alphanumeric. Let's do this. Okay, I'm trying to see if you can get bad requests like a 400 mm, to you. So, okay, I don't think it's that. Let's see what's the. So user ID, oh it's a comment anyway, so comments, but normally I think it should, let's check for the post one. So that returns the user ID one, so Let's say it's okay. So it's still not not found. So that, so it's, there's no validation for that particular um, such object because in some cases, because if he's expecting the um, numerical figure and you put alphanumeric in there, so he will return like I've shown to you. It would return four hundred. Yeah, 400 because that was a bad request, so it doesn't understand it. So which request could not be understood or was missing any required parameters. So that is that. So, and for, I don't know, there's no validation on, on that. So that is fine. So, and that's so on Postman, so you can have your collections also like we've done, so you have your collections there. So, and in this collection, we only have this one. So to make your postman tidy, you can add that, you can add many collections as possible, or you can as well just come in there and create a new request. So that is going to be that. So let's say I create another one and say comment get comments. So for this now, I want to put only the comments in there. So let's say this copy your So this is that. So that brings the comments for me. 
So, so then you can you can try to see if you can try to break one of them. Invalid entry. So let's try to see if we can do this. So put your endpoints we see on the get. So so let's say we do something like name. That should return nothing. So fine. So but now if you do name one is equal to that. Hmm. Oh really? Ah, uh, should not. So apparently there's no validation in that. So you expect that this is shouldn't return anything anyway. So for instance, post ID. Okay, oh, let's say ID is equal to one. So that brings only the ID for you. So if you would not change the ID to ID one, right. Okay. So technically that should return 400 for you because this particular ID or is not among the fields here. So but I think this is not working as expected, but yeah, technically I'll say that's a bug to be honest. So oh, okay. So as you can see then you can you can use a search if that for instance you can say ID is equal to maybe 20 that should bring on uh, the comment with id 20 for you so that that's that so yeah so you can actually search for your id and check it returns the number properly check your body and confirm that the body is as expected it's the same way you do in normal uh mana testing so when you search for an object or element or you search for a particular you do a query and you're expecting to get returns back. So this is your uh, returns, well, your response basically. So then you just need to validate that one. So that is that. So you can as well put either also if there's any need for either. So let's see if there's anyone with either. Okay, before we do that, let's try the post also. So for the post also you can do that. So post. So let's do the post. So now I can add another one. Add request. Post. Maybe comment. Let's say post comment. So, so da uh, okay, so So this is the body that you have 100 
So and it's telling you it is created 201. So it's different from 200 that we have before. So and it's saying that is already um, created. So and the ID is now 101. So if you do another one, you expect. So also you always return to ID 100. So this is your response for that particular post. So and. In most cases, it doesn't need either or body, but if it does need either or body, you can put those things here. So, let's see. Okay. So, the same thing with forge and put. So, let's see. We can create a new request and call it put request. So you just need to change that and put that. So yeah. So from what you can see, yeah, that gives error four four because that particular resource was not found actually. So what was the case? Because I think I put double post in there. So if you try that again, so that gives 200 because that has been updated. One ID one has been updated. Now let's see one, two, three, four. Dash. Yeah, that is not found because there's no ID of that. So if you do that 11, I think that should be updated. You have to your status. So basically, you're going to be more often than not, you get your body. Those are the most important things that you do. Get your body, you get your um, tests and everything. So let's go to the test also. There are some tests that has been already generated for you. So and you can go to the test. So so let's say you want to okay, status code is on ten. Okay, for that. So you can do that. So you can see that you that automatically just click on that that check your status code for you, and so you can see it actually say your test passed and so it, your status code is two hundred. So you can do other tests also from here. So let's say mm, which other one successful post and we're not posting. So let's see which other one that we can. Okay, let's see what it contains that. So it said the body does not contain. Let's put the ID and it's got 11. So you got expected that, so expected that one to include a string you want to search. So basically that one failed. So so basically this is what you need to search. So to include what you include. So let's go to the body. Our body should include this ID. So you can see now it matches. So because there's 11 in the code, and because that's what we search for. So and so you can you can do different things with us. It's got some snippet that you can use. But as time goes on, they can start to develop your own. Um, maybe clear your global variable, get global variable, get a variable. Depending on what you want, I think you can. Uh, or send a request or 
So, well, you can you can have a play on that. So, yeah. So now let's now go to most inter interesting parts to see how does that link to our code. So this is basically you doing your manual testing. I will go through it again. So, so the first thing you are giving an endpoint. For instance, let's say this is the endpoint. That's what that's got. So you go into your browser, you check that endpoint. So it returns that, right? So more often, like I said, this definition is going to be in your acceptance criteria in your story. So say when you go to that endpoint, which developer are going to advise you? So to say you should be able to get these responses. And you should have user ID, ID, a title, and also completed. So that should be returned for you. So then what you need to do is to go into your postman. So create a new request. So, and you can put it in the collection. So I can do another collection now. New, new test. So this is the, the collection I did before, and there's a new one now, so which I can add new requests to it. So now I can say, um, I think to do is uh, to do testing. So, so then going to that. So to do testing, I want to do that, get that. So, and I want to send. You can say I'm not using any authorization because it doesn't require. So, but if you need to use an authorization, but uh, you, you need, they will address you. So if the developer say it's bear token that you need to use, you just need to click on that and put the bear token and it's been advised for you. You put the token there. Or if it's um, of 1.0, you just need to click on that. Then they will tell you um, what those ones are, consumer keys, security, um, consumer secrets and everything. You just need to fill everything as it is right now and you just click consent. So that's basically it. So all this will be advice will be given to you by developer. So, and also the other, so on so your test, you can design your test based on what you want to see. So, and that is that. So for instance, now let's say this one now, uh, if I say send, I'm not using any authorization. So, and I'm expecting to see the title she con the body she contain that. So I can go to my test and I go to that say response body contain a string. So what is the string that she contain? So yeah. So then if I run that so I've got one test and the test pass. So but if I say, if I put that in there, so that should fail because then it's not matching. So that's kind of, you doing manual testing, even though uh, you there's a bit of code snippet that has been added to you, um, for you. So, and that code, you can save this, and also you can, I think you can also import it to other users also, so you can, import the previous one. I think you can also export what you have and send it across to other people so so that you can have it. So yeah, so that is that um, on that one. So um, yeah, there are other tests that you can do, like I said before, so you don't need to be limited by that, but I'm more particular about the automation one. So now, let me fix this, then we go to automation. So I say that, okay. So there's syntax error. Okay. Okay, now, 
the next step now is for us to uh, import this. So the easy way right now, we're going to lo look at our code. Uh, we're going to now do automation in from IntelliJ using Java and with our feature file. Let's, we've done that before. Let's create a step definition and also we create our feature. So let's say we want to, based on this request right now that we have, so I can just say what this should do. Okay, so for, for instance, let's say this gets the user that posted, um, okay, all the posts for user ID one. So this is, I want to search for all the posts for user ID one. So, and that is the acceptance criteria. So I go in the create. Searching for post. So dot feature. Okay, so now you write your feature. So the scenario. First, it says search for post. So the first thing is one given I have access the, let's say I connect Oh, okay, sorry, I think. Yeah, let's see what that is. Okay, can you see my screen now? Sorry, apologies for that. Okay, cool. So, yeah, what I've done was to create a new uh, feature files. I think you know how to just right click click on new, click on file, then um, yeah, put search for feature, search for post, then that takes you here, then put your feature, search for post, and that's what I've just done. I'm not sure if this can be bigger. No, unfortunately. Unfortunately, I don't think so. Okay, no, I don't. So. Yeah, one question, can we do this with Selenium and C Sharp? So, this is not Selenium, this is API testing, right? So it's different from Selenium. So even though uh, I've got code with Selenium already in there, right? But I'm creating another uh, 
um, feature file for the API level. So, but of course, you can do with C sharp, uh, even though I'm using Java right now. So, if you are using C sharp, you just need to use uh, what's it called, um, Spectro with it instead of Cucumber that we're using right now. So. So, they are the same thing, API web services, I think they are basically the same, yeah. So, okay, so let's continue, so, okay. All right, so, and I connect to the endpoint, so maybe when, I search for the post for user one, this is a 12. Then the turned should be 200. Okay, so let's just do that simple one quickly. So if you understand what I've just done, just normal feature file actually. So that brings just giving icon to the endpoint when I search for the post for user 12, that's the, is a part, I've put a parameter there, so, and then it should return the status of 200. So that is that. So, the next one now is to create the step definition. So if you are using C sharp also, this you still need to do this step because you create your feature file also in that way. So if you C sharp you create this also. So then the next is your step definition. So you create your step definition for that particular one. So I'm going to create my step definition here. So which is new. So of course, if you C sharp, you create your C sharp class. So you can say search. So let's say API search. So that is the done. Another question. How detailed do you need to be? I think that the different discussion that you need to go to low level or high level, that, that it's up to you, to be honest. You could go into low level, you could go into a level depending on what you want. So. So now the next step now. So the next step now is to go to West Mine also. Close that. So now the next is click on code. 
So we've, we've created this uh, in right now. Created this to do testing in Postman. And uh, we've tested it in Postman manually. And it seems to be, to be fine. Everything is okay. So, and now you can export it basically. So, so, so if you click on code, if you click on code, so you get your code. So you can now get your code in different formats. You can generate your code snippets in different formats. So you can get, if you're using C, that's the C sharp, that comes with very sharp. If it's Java, you have these two, JavaScript, you have that, Node.js, you have those two. So, but since we're using Java, we use Oak, HTTP, and Unrest. So, anyone that you want to use, let's, let's use Oak, okay, HTTP. So, this is the snippet that you have. So, this is the snippet that you have. So, what you need to do is to copy that snippet and put in your code. So, I can as well just put in my given one so that I get my response, everything done. So as you can see, it's got the URL there, and it's got the header and postman token. So if you already have authorization and everything, so you also generate everything with this. So what you just need to do is just copy what you it generated for you. So then that's what you need. So then what you need to do is now. Go to your code. Let's generate this one. So let's right click this. So what we need to do, generate your step definition. I want to create a new one. So I'll call it API step devs. I want that to be stored in this step definition. Okay, I can change the thumbnail. Okay, so now this is what you have, right? So when is what has been created? So let's create the other ones. Let's create the other one. So the when is what's created yet now. So let's create all now. Create all step. Want to put that in there. So yeah. So now I have all my steps already created. So I go into here. So that is my code to generate my response. All right. So then I can go into my code and I want to put that in my given. Because that's the first one. Okay, now this is where you need to do some a bit of refactoring also right now. So, awk HTTP said cannot resolve, so you need to add the library to it. So the response also, so what enter, import the class. So it's gonna say, which one do you want to import? I think it comes, there's one with Selenium and there's one with OK HTTP 3. So I'll just use the one that comes with OK HTTP 3, not with the Selenium one, but I've not, I've not used this one before, but let's use this one. So the same way for the response or enter. So import. So okay, we're going to use the of H3. Okay, cool. And also for the response also import. So now we got that sorted. So 
So if you run this right now, your response is already going to be created. So and you can now do whatever you want to do with your response. So and now this is where it becomes interesting. So because you need to use your response in a different uh, method, so you need to initialize your or uh, declare your method, your response at the top on your request at the top. So I can quickly do this. I put it at the top of the class. So then I can remove that one. So same thing with this one. So so I don't need to do this yeah. Okay. So I did this because when I come to the then I want to get the response also from then or I want to get the request in, in the when so I should be able to do that uh in other part of the step definition. So so the next is now for you to get your response. So in maybe let's say let's get here yeah, response dot body you get response of body. So you have every uh, method that you can actually call from from there so as you can see it's been listed there so for instance your body you go you can also check your header you can return the header let's say header. Algorithm response status. So the end goal is equal to that. So you can, at this point, you can assert the code you get. Dot. So assert equals. Assert equals okay integer code So with this you don't you don't even need to win anyway, so so basically what you have here right now is to say
Okay. Uh, so what what you say? What you do quickly is to now assert the particular response. So let's go through it uh, uh, to run it through, and then we I will go through it again. So before I call it today. So one minute. Let me put a breakpoint here so that we see how this works. So. And that is that, so let's debug. Is that not working? Okay, so let me put a breakpoint here now. Okay, so now you have your request and you have your URL, you have your method is a get and your header is displayed, name and value, you have everything in there. So and your body is not the tag there. So in some value. So okay. So that's your uh, request. So let's see what the response is going to give to us. So let's continue. So basically, what I've done is to. Uh, Debug the code. So what it does is that you got your client, so you execute the client, so and you got those responses. You don't need to worry about those ones. So what I'm particular about is the response, right? So which you're going to get uh, very soon. So so now I've got my responses. Cool. So this is what I'm going to assert my code is 200 which is fine so but i've got code of 100 there and i want to say she has started the 100 so i'm expecting that to fail so there's no message there's no handshake the other is returned the same way we have this other that was there before so and other ones also has been added to it so you can actually check um, what is in your response so is there any body? Yes. So this is the body of the message. So that's what you have. So and then so that's you asserting it that you cost that. So the same way also you can also assert that the body returns something and you can assert the content of that body. To, so that you can actually um, do your assertion based on what the response is. So you can go through this and see what are your responses. You got your request there. You got your code. The message, nothing is done on the message. So, but if there's anything, you can also confirm that. You just need to confirm as such that the message return nothing. So, and also, your header, you can also verify your header. I start that there's something on the header, and also the body. You got a lot of things on the body. The value was that. So yeah. So let's try to see what the body is. I think is in our. So what's the body? Okay, yeah, this is the body. So, so yeah, okay, this is the body. So let's try to see where that is stored. So 
is a name tattoo. So, of course, it's not the value. So, you got your body source buffer. No source. So to be honest, I don't really know why nothing is going on, but you can actually verify the body, it will, it will, okay, to be honest. So let's continue with that anyway. So you can verify anything that you want to, the same thing I want to verify this right now. So, and next, so. So that is finished. So I can, if I run it again, then you get to see the error message. So that is going to fail because the message is now, uh, the status is now 100, the status will be 200. Even 100, there's no error message of 100 anyway. So then it should be 200. So that's where you're expecting. So if you put that in 200, and you run that again. Yeah, so I say I should run it again to see where I copied the files from. I'm going to go through it again and that will be it. So, yeah, so that passed. So the same way also, you can as well, so I'll do the next one for this one right now. Let's see the post one that we've done for, for this right now, for the post. So what you need to do is if you send it, right, and we have our um, body, is there, this is one simple, let's see what we will get from this one. So this is the body. So what you need to do is to click on code when you click on code, you get this. Uh, it's already been defaulted to this, our setting, but initially it was in HTTP. So we changed that to Java. Uh, we are using HTTP. Okay, HTTP. So maybe this time let's use Unirest and see what we have. So this is the unit REST code, this is the snippet. So we copy that. So let's try to then we create another one also a feature file. Mm. Let's say such. What's that one that we're doing? No. Post comment. Okay, so let's say that it's so then we we'll do
so let's generate all these ones and put it in the same step. So, oh, I don't want to do that. So, because that has got a different response. Okay, that's fine. So now in my given that uh, someone asks, so I go into that given, yeah. So I've already copied one and I can paste that here. So now because we're using HTTP response, we put our complete alt enter import class unirest enter. Okay, so you will need Unirest. I should make this bigger to be honest. I don't think it could let's say quickly, otherwise, we'll leave it. No, so my aim can I resolve you? Yes, one minute. Let me just do a quick Google. Think that can be made bigger. Sorry, I'll do. I'll try to see if you can. No. you need that in your one minute so I think I didn't you need us to each other maybe I think you need a moving call for that ah oh, come on Okay, I think that's what you need. So you put that into your pawn. That's my pawn. The pawn. Okay, dependencies. Okay. There you go. So let's go back. That's my problem. Okay, uh, where's the import changes? Yeah, 
Yeah, that's taking time. So I need to be changed. So the color, the fish color. So so that's the loading. So okay, cool. That's finished. So let's go back. So that should now be resolved. Import class now. Okay, cool. Okay, so the issue now is we got a response already. So I'm going to change that name to a different one because so I'm using uh, that should be the rest response. Require that JDK incubator war. Can I see my screen? Yeah, this one, right? So nice. Okay. Okay, let's see what the case to us. So the same thing also. So I, I try, I just try to use Unirest anyway. So, but uh, we know it works for the op type. We've done the uh, OK HTTP clients. So we're trying to do Unirest. So this is the same thing also. You just need to use that also. So for the then, you, I think I said, we didn't use the when anyway. So where's it then? Yeah, okay. So, okay, this is the issue now. So if you go to post then the post valid comment status should be done, so. So just integer. Well, I'm not looking for. I'm looking for this. Universe get status. So it's called get status. So the instead of um, get code is using get status. So so that's that. So yeah. So uh, okay. There are a lot of questions now. Okay, all right. So yeah, I feel like the screen is too small, but there's nothing I can do to be honest on that. So 
I couldn't enlarge the screen. So I'll just go through the step one after the um, right now. So um, for some guys, either if you are if you are struggling with the uh, code, you don't need to worry. For some guys, the, this is um, sufficient for you. This is uh, using the API with Postman. So what you need to do, you need to know uh, the methods that you want to to use, whether you want to use get, post, pull, to pass, you get this information from the uh, from the developer, so you can actually ask them. So, but sometimes you also need to be able to know what each one of them does. So, which and I've highlighted this particular website that I see to you can see. I think I scroll down to that. Yes. Yeah, so the four most important ones. So the post, the put, the get, the delete. So you can actually see what they do. So then after that, your endpoint, you get your endpoint. So you put your endpoint here. And so you click on send. So once that is done, in most, I said in some cases, you may need to use authorization. So if they're giving you authorization, and you need to specify the type of authorization that it is. So if you don't need an authorization, you can say no auth. So or if you're using Vera token, you click on Vera token, you supply the token here. And if you are using on that on the just auth, you click on that and supply the details as it is. Also, they're going to know, I think the developer should be able to advise you. So if you are using of 1.0 or of 1.2.0, so you can put that and put your access token in there. So, and yeah, so a request for a new access token. So, and also you can also request for a new URL. But yeah, so that is as depending on the type of authorization that you are using, you need to specify the right one and put those details in. So the header also for some endpoints there might be headers that you need to supply. So you put the header and the value of that header. So I mean, the developer also should be able to help you with that. So and then the body. So because this is a post, right? So if my supply the body for the post, if it's a get, you don't need a body for that. So for the post, like basically a post is like a form, right? You are sending a form and you need to fill in the form. But so that's what is, is useful. So then I think we'll also talk about the test. You have some parts. Uh, uh, some snippets here that you can use. So I think we we'll use the one for, uh, yeah, if your status code is 200, and uh, we'll set, check our responses also. So you can actually use that. So that is part of the manual testing. So you can use that. So you can check your status, check the time, check your body that's returned, check the header to be confirmed that it's defined. So then if you have any test already done, you can check your test based on that. So let's say I've got tests already to check the response time. And I can also create another test to check the status code as I think I'm clicking that twice. So which is no. Uh, so then also your test also goes into that. So and like that. So I think that should fail because it should return 201 instead of 200. So you can change that to, to what you're looking for. So yeah, so that is the minor part. And I've talked about collections, how you can do different collections. So from there, so so we move to, yeah, I said that's going to, yeah, exactly. So. That should be 201. So you can change that to 201. So basically, so that's how to validate it. So basically, so status is 200. Oh, yes, yeah, press in 201. So response time is greater than 200. So you expected that.
So yeah, so that is the manner part of the of the API. This is manner testing of the API. So if you now want to uh, automate it, right, you have easy option. So you can as well use um, other methods also for that particular form. I thought we were going to use other method, but there's no time right now. So, um, so what you need to do is to go to Postman that you've already done. So, and you have two options in Java to use. You can use Uni, Uni REST, or you can use Oak clients also. Oak type clients, yeah. So. And in the first one, we use OK HTTP. So for that particular one, so what you need to do is just change it OK HTTP. I guess that for you. And then you can copy the snippet. So when you copy that snippet, you put in your code. You just need to establish where to put them. So in my own case, Apple already added them to my given scenario because I'm using Cucumber for this purpose. So as I said, my given is my precondition. What do I need to do? I can as well split them to get into different parts of given or add some part of the win. So in my given clause now, if I go in there, I've got this, right? So I can as well say, this is my given. I can move this to a when clause. So just to be sure, so that my when is going to be that one. So the same way with that. So Okay, I think it's not allowing me to do that. So I will I just put that because client dot call request. Oh, okay, because this is already here. So this I can bring this one out. Maybe that is that. So if I bring that one out, I can yeah bring this one inside my web clause. So everything is a bit tidy up. So yeah. So yeah, so what I did was just um, I've changed it a bit right now, but you can you don't you don't need to worry. So you can put it in your given clause everything. Or uh, so this is what I did. I put oh, one minute. Let me just do it again. So copy my code. So copy this. So my code. So I pasted that. But right now, since I'm using object oriented programming, my request I want to use in the other method. For me to use in the other method, I need to bring this one outside. I need to initialize in the, uh, initialize this particular request in the in the class. So that's what I now did at the top. So I did that at the top. So then if I, because I've done that at the top, I don't need to do it again here. Yeah? So I don't need to instantiate it again uh, or declare it again. So I just need to instantiate that particular request. So that is ready. So, and also right now I was doing this. I want to bring this uh, response into my when clause so that this is my given and the response is my when I execute it because my when closed. So then for me to do that also I need to bring this one outside. The same way also I need this uh, instant um, initialization to be out of this particular method. So I can put I put that also at the top of the of the class. So since I've done that at the top so I don't need to do this again. So I don't only need to, I need to remove the response. So then that's one. But I want it to be in the um, in the when clause. So I move it and I put it here. So but for that to work, 
because it's got clients and the client is initialized with this. So you need to move also this one to the top of the class so that it can be seen. So that's where I move this also to the top of the class. So basically for the next one, it's going to be easy. So I don't need to declare this. I don't need to declare this. I, don't, I just need to um, continually use the old one. So for instance, if I have any other ones with the same endpoints, I can just use it like that. Or I can as well just put my endpoint in my, oh, for instance, yeah, if I want to be clever, I can put, I can pass my endpoint as a parameter, right, inside this, so that then anytime my postman value is the same thing, so I can just go to the endpoint directly from my page object, no, from my feature file. So that's another way to, to do that. So, oh, so basically that, that, that's it for, for the API also. So like I said, uh, you can, some people, what they need is just minor part of the, of the API. You don't, you don't need to worry if you don't get the automation part of it, that's fine. I, just, I try to make it as simple as possible, but there are other bits that you can use. You can use Rush Assured also with, with, with that. So it's not that difficult the same way also. Just need to bring the Rush Assured library to that. But I just thought this is kind of a bit easier. So you don't need much of the libraries. So, okay, before I forget also, I think the, another thing that we did was to add uh, UD REST because we try to use that to our pawn. So we added unit rest to our pawn. So when we try to restart, okay, yeah, this one. But in the first one that we did, that we didn't use unit rest, so it doesn't matter. We don't. So in the okay, uh, okay, HTTP, we are able to add every. We are able to import all the libraries without having to add it to our Maven pawn. So. Uh, for the universe, you need to you need to add these particular dependencies to your pawn. So that is that. Any question before? So uh, I know it's kind of a bit deep, but yeah, it's not. If you look at the video again, so if you have any issue, you know, let me know. So, but if you get the manual part, I think you should you should be fine. But if you still need to do the automation, so. Basically, look at the, um, watch the video again. It's kind of a bit modular, but I think you should be able to get it from there. Any question? Yeah, mana part is pretty straightforward. Yeah, I agree. So even the automation is, is it can be easier than that. So maybe I will do a quick one quickly right now, just to for your mind to be at rest. So. So quickly, let, let me go through this again. So for what you need to do for the automation, for the automation, create a new feature file. So new uh, feature file. Let's say I call that feature file posting comment. So, okay. So because I need to put restart. So what am I doing? Feature posting must be comments. So my scenario follows. So given okay, posting. So then, so you're given. Given I connect, 
or let's say giving I okay, let's see the right word to use. One minute, there's a question. Okay, how do you approach validating the response? Well, I've got three right now. So, okay. So, just want to use the right word. So, given. So let's say given a build. So. Then your when, which is what we've done, which is the one given and when. Experiences. So these are the step. The first thing you build the API uh, endpoint, then you execute the call, and then you check the status of that call. So, so this is technically what you're going to do in there. So when you go to your, okay, first, let me first create this step definition. Okay, so one of them is done, the given is done, so let's do the other ones. Okay, so now I've created my step definitions for everything. So one, my given, right? So the first one is my given clause. So what I need to do, this is what I have. So I've got this now. So let's do this one step or the other. This is kind of, I want to use this in all the methods. So this should not go to my given. So I copy that. I put the, that at the top of my class. So to instantiate that. So then that, I need to import that. So control enter, you import the class. So we, I'm using the OK HTTP3. So then that is done. So the next part is this part, right? So which is the request. So which it goes into your given. So you go to your given class and you want to put that in there. So the next one is the request. You want to also import that request, import. And you want to use the OK HTTP3 also with it. So that is done. So then the next is your response. So, OK. OK, before we do that, also before we do that, so the this request, because we're going to use it in this part, right? We want to use it in the other parts. We want to, in my, um, Okay, so let's say we don't need to use the request in the other part, so oh, we need, yeah, we need to use it. So, because for instance, if you do this, right, 
you want to use your request is now global. So in my when clause, I want to put my response there. So this is what you have. But because your request now is not visible, so you have that. So what you need to do is to put your request at the top. Let's first we solve the response first. Alt enter. So we import that. So that is fine. But however, your request is still showing error because it is not visible. So what you need to do is to move, instantiate to your, uh, or declare your rest request at the top of the class. So once you do that, then it's been visible here. So because you've already uh, declared at the top, you don't need to do this again. So, and that fixes that. So the same thing also, the next part now is your then clause, which you want to now assert. Assert, let's say, let's use the test ng1 dot assert equal. So what do you want to assert? We want to assert the response. So that's the question that came. You want to assert the response. So now if I put the response here, so you can you couldn't find it because there's no uh, the response is declared in this particular method. So it's not visible yet. So for me to do that, I need to also declare my response at the top. So once I've done that, I just need to remove that. So then it's visible, so I can say response dot. So, and you can now, code is the one that you have, which is the status code, the request, the body, depending on, and also you can get the header. So depending on what you want to, you can also um, validate your header and click on header then, so, depending on what you want to validate, you have everything here. So let's say we want to validate the status code. You just click on the code and comma. So what is the expected result for that? Equals 200, oh, let's say it's integer 200. And then also more often than not, it's going to return 201 for us. So that is that. So then, yeah. So that is that. So that is, this is basically what you need. So the first thing is your given clause and then your when clause is when you execute it and then your assertion is when you uh, assert defend your response. Uh, the, um, so you can assert the body, assert anything that from there. So that's, that's basically it anyway. So yeah, any other question? Okay, if there's no question, so uh, I think that that would be it today.